Welcome to another episode of This Old Hootie, where I take this piece of crap and try and make it a little more pretty. I hope. Today we're going to start by adding a little more flash to the dash. We're going to change our column shifter, knobs, and hazard button to a billet aluminum. We're also going to change out our pedals, gas brake and emergency brake, to billet aluminum, a little more shine in here. And then I'm going to tidy up the wiring for the shaved door handle kit in both doors so I can get the door panels back on with the new wires that are run behind the glove box. The stuff we're going to be working with today is all laid out over here. We have the, uh, what is this, Forever Sharp steering wheel, horn button, everything that's needed. We've got a couple stickers, air freshener. I think it's a beautiful steering wheel. It's got the uh, billet on the back, a rubber cover for the handle bit, which is nice and comfy. And I selected the polished with the rubber black grip and the black center with the Chevy cap. The only thing I need to do is take this kit off and reinstall it onto the back of this one. So that's pretty simple all in itself. I am gonna use this one for the uh, tilt steering column. I'm gonna use the chromed out hazard button and I'm gonna use the billet shifter. I also picked up from Speedway Motors the matching billet mirror for the rest of my set that's in there. That's pretty nice, nice and shiny. You can see the back matches all the rest of the pieces with the three stripes. And then I have what's left of my spall kit here. I need to replace, I need to replace the actuator in the uh, driver door because the one in there is broken. And I'll take a look and I'll show you uh, that as well once it's done. All right, let's start getting these toys in the truck. Just gonna quickly document what it took to get the uh, speaker back into place. You guys remember from the last video, the LMC dash? Say hi, Maya. Hi. That's my helper today, guys. Okay, so the LMC dash is in, everything is back on as it should, and I'm assembling the last couple pieces here. Inside the speaker pocket on the passenger side, I had to dimple this. What I did is I took a heat gun, heated this up a little bit, and then I took a large socket and just pressed into this so it would drop just under a quarter of an inch in this location here so the speaker can sit back inside here properly. The piece on this side fit fine. The surrounding fit fine, but the air conditioning, which is perfectly centered behind the dash and bolted where it should be, wouldn't allow the existing speakers to drop back in. So you can see that dimple there in the light. That's all I had to do. And now I can drop the speaker and get the cover back on. So let's do that. Okay, now that the speaker's in, Let's get the cover on it. Okay. Obviously, if you are going to be swapping out your steering wheel, yours will be slightly different because mine has a removable kit already on this portion. To remove the shifter at the very bottom from the 88 to 94, there's a little pin that you just hammer upwards. It'll pull right out from the top. Be careful because there's a little spring inside here. We're gonna swap this piece out. I'm gonna show you that in a minute. Our hazard button right here hazard button. Once again, this is for an 88 to 94. Mine happens to be a 1992, so yours will differ if it's not in those years. It'll differ slightly. This is held on by one Phillips head screw. It's basically just unscrewed, and you twist the new one in. And then over here, we have our tilt control. That's also just screwed in. And like I said, I am going to be leaving my windshield washer control because it has my cruise control on the end of it because this truck does have cruise control. So...
Here's our tilt control. Here's our new one. Be careful not to cross thread this thing. Let's get a Phillips head, swap out that hazard button. Let's quickly hit out this little pin so we can get our shifter changed. So I couldn't find a punch. I'm going to try a small Allen key or a small Phillips head screwdriver that's a piece of garbage to try and tap out that pin. So Phillips head will work. We're going to see if we can punch this little pin out. Well, now I have a punch for next time. A little handle broke off the screwdriver. This is your little pin that's going to be seated inside holding the shifter on. Now we're going to take this out carefully because there is a spring underneath this here. So we don't want to lose that spring. So here's our old one. Here's our replacement. See if we can get under that spring there. So I need to carefully reseat that spring that I told you about here. Let's see if I can show you. Okay, so inside this little pocket here, there you go. You see that little spring that's hiding in there? Let's see if I can get it better. There we go. So that little spring that's hiding in the pocket there, we need to reseat it in the little hole so we can get the new shifter in. So let's do that really fast. need to get this on top of the spring. seated very nice okay we got our tilt very nice we got our new uh, hazard button just push it in pull it out and we got our new billet shifter very nice a little three stripe design here that seems to match everything that uh, we've already got I think that adds a little flash to the dash. Very nice. As I showed you before, speakers and top is done. All right, so connecting this stuff is pretty self-explanatory. The kit that I have from Billet Specialties, each one of the little threaded bolts go into the inner bolt holes. And I took a little Allen key, tightened each one. Then I'm gonna take a washer and a lock nut, put them on the back, locking it to the pedal. Now I've got my template. I'm going to transfer the markings. I'm going to take this template I just made 
And I'm going to transfer the markings of these bolts onto the template. Just center it behind here. There we go. Well, we've got our bolt holes. And I'll tape this off onto there and just hit them up. Make our holes. I'm gonna put a little something down here to catch the little shavings. Let's go through the metal. All right, we got one down, three to go. And last but not least. Okay, let's widen these out a bit. Let's try this again. Line up the holes. Four. Nice. That will do. Let's get these tightened out. So the brake pedal now is good to go after, uh, let's see if I can get that shine out of your face there. Let's see here. There we go. Block a little, little light. So the brake pedal, as you can see, is good to go. I mounted the driver pedal to the aftermarket billet ones that were already in here. I'm just gonna use larger washers to lock that in there real tight because you only have this little square to connect to. So since the billet that was already in here has that square, I'm gonna mount this to the pedal after I've mounted it to the inside of this, which is indented so it'll hide it anyways. And the larger washers here will lock in this tiny pedal nice and tight. So let's get this one installed. So let's get this taken off. And let's get this in its place. That should look pretty nice. We get a Torx head. Let's swap these out real quick. Pretty sure taking off a screw is pretty self-explanatory. Mine had a T15. Not sure if that's original or not. This shiny new one here uses all Allens. Let's get our bracket on here.
Okay, well that's a problem. As you can see, this uh, beautiful little mirror here is fully extended this way from both of the little ball adjusters. And if I flip it the other way, same issue. That's a problem. This needs about 40 degrees more. And I have to drill another hole and tap it. I think the only way to fix this thing, I'm guessing this is made for hot rods that have flat glass in the front. So this would have to either be at an angle, which is ugly as sin. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new hole here and tap it so this is on the front part, which will make it where it needs to be. So we're gonna have to drill another hole here and tap this piece into here with the threading. We're gonna have to drill a hole into here and tap it with the same threads this uses so we can mount this here like this instead of on the bottom. That'll fix the problem because that'll give it enough angle. As you can see here, this is too low at its highest. If I put it here, that's exactly where we need to be. So, I'll have to save that for another video. Always something. It's nice and tight still. Put our little set screw back in. Well, at least we have a mirror for now. Okay, now let's get back to our wiring. So this is my little nightmare mess here. That we, we're gonna clean all this up, run fresh 12 gauge out to each one of the doors and back up to behind the glove box and rerun all of this stuff here. Let's get this wiring cleaned up. As you can see, I've already started and I've removed all of the wiring for the solenoid and I've pulled the solenoid out of this door. I did not cut that out. This car came that way. So that's that. I've removed the solenoid and all of the nasty wiring, including the ones that were jumped off of all of these switches here, removed all of that. And I've started to run a new set of 12 gauge back into the cab. The goal is to have two wires going into the door. The goal is to have two wires going into the door. Well, three if you include the emergency switch. But uh, we're gonna have a ground that's gonna run right through the door and gonna ground out right on the inside here. That way it's not grounding to the door. This is a much better ground. And we're gonna have the power, which as you can see here, I'm gonna be running up under the dash. I'm gonna run it up under the dash and to behind the glove box over there. Same thing for that door. Well, actually, while I'm here. This is the Spall shaved door handle kit. I'm gonna go over what everything is in here. I'll go over the wires, what you need to connect your two doors, if you have two doors, and break down what these are. So if you're installing the exact same kit, you can follow this and get your wiring done. This is the Spall shaved door kit. For those of you who are thinking about getting one, it has the 40 pound solenoids and I'm going to leave the details for this in the description down below. For those of you who saw the other videos and who watched me do the sound deadening, you'll notice that I left this red wire because I told you I was gonna be replacing it. Well, the plan is, is to take this red wire, here's my antenna wire, you know I don't use the antenna, I've mentioned it many times. I'm actually gonna tape this eight gauge wire, which is about the same diameter as this, and I'm gonna pull it back through into the engine. So this eight gauge will become my power for the relays that I'm putting back here for both doors. So as you can see here, what I've been cleaning up is there are wires that are jumped off of some of these switches. I'm taking them all back out, taking the pin out, taking the pin out of the harness here, 
putting some heat shrink over the damage to the wires. If the wire is bad, I'm replacing the entire wire. I'll polish those up after the fact. They're pretty nasty. So this way, same thing as the driver door. And I will also have an emergency switch going into this door hidden somewhere. So I will have one 12 gauge power wire to replace this. And as you can see, the relay was installed right here. So I'm taking all of this out because I don't want any of these things in the door. I want them easier to access behind the glove box. They're just gonna have the two wires. You're gonna have the one from the solenoid here, which is gonna go through the door and it's going to get grounded out right here. So let's dig into the wiring. All right, so like I said before, I'm using the 40 pound shaved door kit from Spall. That's uh, what's been in the car before. So I'm gonna stick with that for now. This is that kit. You have four wire harnesses or four plugs that go into the unit itself. It's pretty simple. You have the uh, remote set button, which is on the side here, along with an LED. Um, this is to link up your remotes to the unit of remotes. This is your antenna. I have the yellow wire plugged into the outside connection. This goes to my passenger door. That's the number two on the remote. I have the brown wire plugged into the second terminal in. That's gonna go to my driver door. The third connection, the purple wire, is going to a ground under the dash. And then you have your additional harness here, which is for any of the other features that you'd like to use if you wanna do like you know, if you have four doors or if you have a trunk you want to pop, I don't use any of that stuff, so it's just tied off. The only wire I use from this side here is the black and the red. The red, of course, goes up into the engine bay or you can just connect it to the fuse box and that you're going to want on a constant 12 volts. The black, I have it connected to the same ground that the purple is under the dash. So, pretty simple. Once you understand what the wires are, really kind of hard to screw that up so as you saw on the passenger side I am removing the wires and running them back on this side here we're gonna do the same thing except for there are two extra connections going to this door there's an emergency pull out of here. it's hard to see but this right here is like a bicycle cable and that is run from the latch and it's hidden somewhere on the car then I have a ground cable, which goes right here to the inside of the interior. I have my power cable that's going to the solenoid and that goes to the relay behind the glove box. And then this extra wire here is a power cable that comes from a hidden switch on the truck. So if you push the button, it jumps the battery through this directly to the solenoid, bypassing the entire small kit. So it's basically just a button that controls the solenoid. Let's keep going. Oh. Let's get to the other side, pretty it up like this, run my wires into the door, and test that solenoid. Let's start working on these uh, shaved door handle locks. We're gonna remove, for whatever reason, the wires you can see here that are not even connected. So we're gonna remove all of this excess and reconnect this, and then we're gonna run some fresh wires back into some relays behind the glove box that are gonna to run to both of the doors to handle our shaved door handle kit. I don't feel like getting filthy today. I'm gonna start off by pulling the antenna wire back through into the engine bay. After I tape off this, cut it from here, I'm going to pull it straight through into the engine.
do. I'm just going to yank this right back through. Make sure you roll your windows down if you're working on your shaved door handle kit, because when you close the doors, if you don't have an emergency pull, you're not getting back in easy. So take this, pull it into the engine, and we're going to run it back through into here. This boot right here runs into the cabin with your antenna in it. Pull that back until we get our uh, red wire to start. There we go. There's our red wire. And we just need enough to come out here. this right along the side here and we'll change this and get a terminal on the end of it so for right now we can leave that there all right so we pulled this other end up into the engine bay this one here we're just going to run it right in the back here Oh, come on. Nice. Alright. Very nice. Get this zip tied up into here. Zip ties. Oh, those are white zip ties. Come on, can't anything go right today? See our pants here. All right, let's hit pass. I hate using electrical tape on these things because once it gets all heated up, it's nasty and melted and gets all over the damn place. Hence why I'm wearing gloves because it's everywhere. I'm feeling really getting too filthy today.
this one will keep this cable away from the sharp bits of the door here. All right. As you can see, I've got quite the mess going on here. We've got the uh, solenoid from the passenger door. We've got the solenoid from the driver door. We've got the 8-gauge power wire. We've got the switch wire coming from the shaved door kit under the uh, column. And now we're going to work in our relays. Switch. There's our power. There's our solenoid. So on each relay, on the ones that I bought, if you're using the same ones that I purchased from the um, Link in the description below, that's going to be these. They have blue, black, white, and red. So the white and the red are going to be 12 volt constant coming from the battery. The black is going to be your switch coming from the shaved door handle kit. And the blue is going to go into the solenoid in the door. Those of you, for those of you that aren't using the same brand relays that I am, still going to use four, four of the uh, pins. You're going to use 86 and 30, and that's going to be to your 12 volt constant. You're going to use 85, which is going to go to your switch, whether it's a button or it's the uh, wireless kit. Or And you're going to use number 87, which is going to go, pin 87 is going to go to your solenoids in the door. And that's pretty simple. That's how it's wired. So we'll jump these two together. Actually, I don't even need to use these. I just wanted to see if they would work, but uh, they do. They're not bad. Once I figured how much heat to give them, they're not bad. They're a little hard, not like the uh, flexible stuff like this, but uh, they'll work. Now that we've got our single relay wired up with the kit, wired up to that solenoid, everything is clean. You can see I just have the one wire connected to the door. The ground is ran through and terminated here, so let's uh, connect that to the battery and see if we have a functioning door here. We should. We got a fuse connection here for that single side here. That's just a simple 40 amp. So we got our new relays over here, the wiring all set up just for the passenger door. Let's give it a test. Here we go. Perfect. Alright, now that we know that this door is fully functioning, we're going to get the uh, cover lay door panel back on here because this is... Uh, done until the new pieces here come in which i will then take the panel back off and replace this but for the passenger side a new one for the driver's side but for now i'm going to get the door panel back on so that way uh this is uh buttoned up over here then i'm going to wire up the driver door and then button things back together let's get this door panel back on over here
pretty. Let's see if this lines up with the switch here. Yep, lined up as it should be. Cool! Tomorrow morning I'll polish this up and get it back into the door. Use it. Right here, we have the same harness that you would get from AVS, except the emergency portion. The, emer the emergency portion, if you wanted to add this in, is very simple. Your two black pins, sorry, your two blue wires, which are going to the uh, solenoids in the doors, that's pin 87. All you gotta do is throw power to these pins right here, and it'll go straight to the solenoids in the door. So you would have a common ground, any ground, and you would run the ground out. You could run it from, from the dash, from anywhere, from wherever your relays are. You could run a ground right into the harness along with a power wire to pin 87 and just run those out and tie them up underneath the car somewhere. And if you touch those to a car battery or a drill battery or anything else, it wouldn't have to fire this off because it's going directly to the solenoid. So it bypasses the relay and goes directly into 87 on the out, on the tail, and goes direct to the solenoid and it'll pop it. Um, as far as the other wires, I think they also have a, um, a switch wired in, which is the exact same thing. If you wire your switch into the trigger, so your trigger wires are your black wires on here. So pin 85, if you jump pin 85 before, pin 85 is going into the relay. So if you jump pin 85 and throw power to that, it's the equivalent of hitting the button on your remote. It'll send a signal, not through there, but it'll send a signal of power right into the relay, which will trigger your solenoid. So if you wanted buttons on your dash, if you wanted a button here to be a power, if you wanted your unlock doors to actually pop the solenoids, all you have to do is jump pin 85 to something with power on here, and or on your car, anywhere in your car or truck. If you jump that pin, it's gonna trigger this solenoid, it's gonna trigger this relay and fire off the solenoid. So there's two ways to do it. You can just have the emergency power going somewhere else with a power on the ground going outside the car, or you can just trigger this, the relay, on your own. All you have to do is throw power to it. It'll trigger right off, boom. So anyways, as I promised, here is a home-built harness. These, uh, I think I got six relays for, I think it was like 10 bucks or something like that on Amazon or 12 bucks, whatever it was, uh, including the pigtails, and that's in the description below. That included these fused ones. Um, all the rest of the wiring, this is just, you know, Crappy 12 gauge wiring, it's cheap. It's I think you get like 50 feet of it for uh, $10 or $12, or something like that. That's also in the description down below. So if this is something you don't know how to do and you're looking to do, right here, it takes you uh, an hour. That's what it took to do this. So throw it together. Sorry if I'm talking funny. I, just, I cracked a tooth and just had it pulled out of my head. So not uh, so easy to talk right now. Anywho, I'm gonna keep this in here for now. Wire up that solenoid in the uh, driver door and the emergency switch in there and I'll show you how that works. and. How you, how you do that as well. And um, this is temporary. I just promised I'd show it, so here it is. Um, in a week or two, I'm going to have a, uh, basically my own fuse panel that'll go behind here because I wanna be able to wire neon lights and all the other stuff, basically where I have access to the fuses and can just add all the power and all the negative for low voltage stuff, low amperage stuff in one place. Let's keep going. We got ground to ground.
These two need to be piggybacked. This is an emergency power switch. This is the power coming from the relay. So if the relay is off, but this throws power, it'll still pop the solenoid. So you don't have to take the wiring harness for the door handle, for the door lock and window up and down, uh, for the door handle and the window switches. You don't have to take these off to do what I'm doing, but the reason why I am is because I noticed this. When these solenoids were put in, somebody jumped things off of the uh, wires back here. So we've got some possible shorts or wires that could become shorts or just degrade over time because they're open and that's gotta be repaired. So I'm gonna go through each one of these wires, make sure that they're all covered properly, not I'll put heat shrink, I'll clip it, reconnect it, and put some heat shrink over it to make sure that it's solid and it'll stay that way so I don't have to do this over again. If we do it right the first time, I'm not gonna have to do it again. As far as wiring goes, that's kind of important. These new cobalt bits go through the steel like butter. Start buttoning this door back together and uh, let's keep moving forward. Notice how this handle, when opening, for those of you who've been following along, and for anybody new, let me explain what's going on here. These handles used to stick out like this. Whether I was uh, hitting the door lock or not, when the doors were closed, they were always like this. They would pop open and they would work, but there was too much tension on the solenoid in here, and there was too much of an angle on the solenoid. So eventually this solenoid burned out. I just replaced it. But this now, when you lock and unlock, notice how it goes right back where it should. This Finally, let's get this door panel back on. This one is done.
sure the, the dash lines up with the door here. It does. And I'll bolt everything in. Nice to have that working again. have to just unscrew these and I'll polish this later. I don't have any clean towels, so take care of that. But it's nice to have this working correctly. See how it just slides right back into the place? That's how it should work. Let's get our locks, unlock, windows. Space and place our steering wheel. On these old steering wheels, there'll be a little hole on the side here. You can use that to pop the horn button out, and then there's three bolts behind here that'll take these off. Okay, three bolts. Just pop the horn cap off. just want to take a moment to say thank you to all of you who have already subscribed, to those of you who have hit the like button, and to those of you who have left some comments, good or bad, or opened up discussion. I appreciate every one of you, and I look forward to the channel growing. Um, I think this is pretty cool. I've been doing this for almost four months now, I believe. And do me a favor. Leave it down in the comment section below on this video or the other videos if you have suggestions. Also, I am not the world's greatest editor or video production specialist. It's not what I do for a living. It's not something that I've ever been interested in. So. If you have tips on either editing or sound or, you know, I cut out the time lapses because people were skipping most of them. I took the music out of the video because people were skipping that as well. It seems that you guys like the meat and potatoes, which is what I'm trying to throw into these. So if you have any other suggestions or things that you guys want to see, uh, you know, it'll help the channel grow. Do me a favor. Leave it in the comments below. As usual, everything that I used within this video will be in the description. You can click on that. I am an Amazon affiliate, so I will get a little credit for whatever you guys have purchased. To those of you who have already been purchasing them, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Every cent that comes into the channel goes back into parts going in this car and the other cars that will be on this channel. Thanks again for watching, and let's get back to the video. There we go. With the, let's uh, bolt this down to the new adapter.
Now this will push the wheel out about an inch and a half, maybe two inches, but it also gives me the ability to pull the wheel off, which I like. So we're gonna stick with that. the little connectors fit what I've got here. I don't think that ground wire is going all the way through. Well, I'm pretty sure that the uh, ground wire is not going all the way through. So. It's a different way. Let's give it an actual ground. Yeah. See? So, this ground wire somewhere along the column is broken. That's why these little things come in handy. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take a ring terminal put it on one of these bolts here, that'll ground it back to the column, and then our horn will work just fine. Let's put on the finishing touches, shall we? Nice. We zip tie all these wires up underneath the dash and I'll be right back. Tie up the other side. As you can see, we're back together over here. Okay, we got the driver's side buttoned up. Everything's back where it should be. Here's our sweet new steering wheel. New billet pieces on the column. That's our new shifter. New hazard button. Goes with everything. Not sure if I'm going to be able to. Uh, Show it on camera. There's our door panels with our handles in the proper positions. The stereo sounds phenomenal in here, even without the amplifier, just from the sound deadening. So I'm quite excited about that. Let's button that up. We'll call this a night, get this thing posted. All right, 
button this down temporarily to the relay bracket for the AC. For the AC. So technically, I could be done and button this whole thing up. I've got working doors, the interior is pretty much done. These are gonna have to come off and be polished. But aside from that, this is drivable and usable. I'm gonna put the uh, final piece of billet right now underneath there. Just gotta clip off those two little nubs down there. So you can see right here, got these plastic nubs. I'm gonna cut these off, cut them flush. All right, with our relays fastened down to the uh, AC relay section in the back here, I could call this a day, but I'm not going to because I still have more wiring to do. So if I close this up, everything looks done. I'm gonna get this last piece of billet up here now, clipping off these two little nubs that we talked about that stops it from mounting flush. And then as soon as I have the time in the next week or so, I am going to run, I'm gonna pull the back of this eight gauge back through there, pull it through with the four gauge that I just got, run four gauge, with a uh, 150 amp fuse from the battery to here. Then I'm gonna split it off to three different wires. I'm gonna do an eight gauge for this. I'm gonna do an eight gauge for a fuse block, a terminal block for neons and other things that are going in here, LEDs, excuse me. And then I'm gonna run a four gauge from here underneath the carpet to the back where I'm gonna connect some uh, an amplifier or two and um, add a couple 10 inch subwoofers. The speakers, the radio, that part's already done. These sound fantastic. They don't need any additional amp, but I do need some, some more lower end. So we're going to put a 200 watt amp underneath the seat and two 10 inch kickers behind the seats and build a nice little box that fits this area. So I'm going to get this billet piece on here right now after I trim these two little nubs. As you can see, all of the rest is there. New steering wheel. Looking good. Billet shifter, billet knob here. Got the uh, billet tilt on that side over there. Can't get rid of the cruise control because I actually use that. So let's get back to this. As you saw here, here's that uh, the two relays that I added in and all the wirings. This is my uh, pseudo AVS harness. I've got an emergency tucked up underneath the uh, truck. And I've also got the uh, emergency button hidden somewhere on the truck where I can hit the button and it'll pop the uh, driver door open. All right, we got our nub removed so it no longer hits this area here. Let's get this last piece of billet installed.
buttoned up and looking good. Let's take a look. We got our billet here on the bottom, nice and flush. All the trim pieces are back on and polished up and shined. Got our refinished cup holder. Ashtray. In the next video, I'm going to be uh, taking this out, widening out the hole, and I'm gonna put two USB 3 chargers with a voltmeter in here. And this ashtray is gonna be replaced with a bank of switches for different things. All that's gonna be wired back into the glove box. Got our new steering wheel. The uh, shifter, the hazard button, and the uh, tilt steering. I kept the uh, cruise control because I use it, so there was no way to replace that. They have a turn signal one, but it doesn't have cruise control. You can see I fixed the door handle there. It's nice and flush, as it should be. I need to polish these uh, door billet pieces. I'll take those off and deal with that. They'll be done for the next video. We got our nice little pedals down here. Looking good, nice and shiny, solid billet. That's gonna do it for today's video. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, do me a favor and hit that like button. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe if you enjoy this type of video and you wanna be notified of my uh, next video when it comes out. Hit that notification bell and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.